Hi, and welcome to Charlie's desk. Um, I have some stuff on the desk for my next video, but in the center of the desk is a really awesome book called Journey to Excellence by Stephen Miyagawa. And the subtitle is Development of the Military and VA Blind Rehabilitation Programs in the 20th Century. Um, and I am going to turn to page 105 and, and jump into the story of the long cane from another angle. Um, I want to talk about the collaboration between three people, Richard Hoover, C. Warren Bledsoe, and Russell Williams, Russ Williams. Um, okay, so basically was the first orientation and mobility specialist blind, was the first teaching orientation and mobility specialist blind? The answer is, yeah, I think so. And that person's name was Russ Williams, but I'll start, I'll start, I'll just read the first part of this chapter. It's a great history and it's pretty quick. Okay, chapter six, The Long King. Evidence and history support the fact that prior to the mid 1940s, very little was done to develop effective and efficient mobility skills to enable the blind to travel independently. I would argue with that a little bit, but it's mostly right. Yes, it was invented, orientation and mobility as we know it was invented uh, in the mid 1940s, um, started to be. Uh, consequently, there were no instructors to teach the blind the complexity of foot travel. It was not until World War II, when large numbers of war blind returned home, that the concept of mobility training, employing the use of the cane, was brought forth. Most of these veterans did not harbor any prejudice against the use of the cane or had preconceived ideas about mobility, um, but they were anxious to learn how to become independent so they could go on with their lives. So they didn't have a negative idea of the white cane. They're just like, I want to go. I want to get going. Um, okay, so in 1944, Colonel Elliot Randolph on the medical staff in Washington, D.C., searched for men in the military who had experience working with the blind. And he comes up with Corporal Richard E. Hoover and Tech Sergeant C. Warren Bledsoe. Um, so C. Warren Bledsoe grew up at the Maryland School for the Blind. His dad was the superintendent there. So like his whole life, he's immersed in, in blind world. Um, and these guys were transferred from the Army Corps of Engineers and the Air Corps um, to a new unit at Valley Forge Army Hospital. And they invent the rudiments of long cane travel um, and they were specially selected to help meet the mobility uh, needs of soldiers who are blind and they're waiting for surgical treatment or um, you know when they're ready to get back and, and try walking. So the long cane travel technique um, they invented was just in the very beginning when the like hostilities, the fighting ceased. Um, okay, so they were sort of called upon to invent a way for um, people, the soldiers who were blind, um, to travel. Um, so, but this is based, they, they based their work on, I think, Hanks Levy, W. Hanks Levy, this, this dissertation by an English guy who talks about using a cane. Um, and that's what they come up with. But by the time fighting stops in 1945, it's kind of tenuous what's gonna happen. So. With the end of the war, uh, the fate of this method of mobility threatened to, uh, you know, just go extinct. Um, so, but Bledsoe was picked to establish the rehabilitation venue at Hines, Illinois, and Williams was appointed to re-energize and refine the training methodology that kept the long cane viable. And Russ Williams is blind. Um, this new life to long cane travel technique emerged with vigorous zeal. Warren gave the initial lecture and Williams, Alvin S. Childs, and Catherine Gruber of Guide Dog fame were there as participants. After that, the training was essentially in the hands of Williams, right? So, so who's the first O&M? If, if, you know, these 
two sided guys who made huge contributions and, and seemed like pretty cool guys. Um, Richard Hoover and C. Warren Bledsoe kind of came up with the rudiments. Williams was their first student and he refined everything. So they're giving the initial lecture, but then the training was essentially in the hands of Williams. All right. So during this time, Richard Hoover was already deeply involved in the medical school studying ophthalmology, right? So he's, he's gone. Um, and yeah, so the rigors of his curriculum limited him to no more than three visits to oversee the program. So he wasn't very, very much. Williams was making Heinz, right? It was all him. Um, outside of the occasional observations by Bledsoe and Hoover, the developers of long-chain techniques, Williams had a singular opportunity to train his fledgling staff to meet his own rigid, rigid standards. And that's coming from Stanley Sertuko, okay? That's a, that's a good source. All right, so to me, this means that uh, the first O&M, the O&M who taught other O&Ms was a guy who was completely blind, Russell Williams, he was blinded by shrapnel instantly. And he was the first orientation mobility specialist. I just realized that this morning. Feels great to think about that. Um, especially when you think about, you know, design with, not for. You know, that was happening back then. And, and um, you know, they trusted Russ to, to take the reins of the program and start it. Which is really awesome, you know, that in, in, you know, there's so many things about structures and organizations, um, but to have the military choose uh, this guy who was blind to start the program, I think it was key to its uh, success back then. And um, a lot of blind rehab programs um, base some of their structure on, on that original structure because there's some truth to it. Um, but yeah, so, I think, according to Journey to Excellence by Steve Miyagawa, the first O&M was blind.